If we've learned anything from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's that Sam Wilson is not the first hero to attempt to carry on Captain America's legacy. He's not even the first black man to pick up the shield. That honor goes to a forgotten legend named Isaiah Bradley. Just who is Isaiah, and why does no one in the Marvel Universe remember him? How does his tragic story draw from one of the worst U.S. government scandals of the 20th century? And where does everyone's favorite six-clawed X-Man fit into this picture? Let's find out. How does it feel? Like it's someone else's. Stan Lee once described Marvel's superhero universe as the world outside your window. The Marvel Universe may be populated by superhumans, mutants, and literal gods, but they all struggle with the same problems as the rest of us. Spider-Man has a hard time keeping his bills paid. Mr. Fantastic is no good at finding a balanced work-home life. And the Hulk is just a case study of what an abusive childhood, years of repressed anger, and an overdose of gamma radiation can do to a man. Sadly, that emphasis on realism means systemic racism is just as big a problem in the Marvel Universe as the real world. And that's where Isaiah Bradley comes in. Isaiah is the main protagonist of 2003's Truth, Red, White, and Black. Written by the late Robert Morales and drawn by Kyle Baker, the series reveals Steve Rogers was far from the only soldier the government attempted to transform into a superhuman propaganda tool. Because the formula for the super soldier serum is lost when Dr. Abraham Erskine is killed by a German spy, the scientists of Project Rebirth attempt to recreate it through trial and error. They do so by experimenting on hundreds of African-American soldiers, whom the eugenics-obsessed Dr. Josef Reinstein sees as expendable tools for the cause. The series draws heavily on the real-world Tuskegee syphilis study, an infamous government-sponsored program wherein researchers studied the long-term effects of untreated syphilis in hundreds of African-American men without their full knowledge and consent. The study lasted 40 years, long after official funding ran out and many of the test subjects thought it had ended. None were given the proper treatment and free health care they were promised up front, meaning many patients suffered the effects of syphilis for decades, thinking they had been cured. Similarly, Truth shows hundreds of soldiers being subjected to experimental serums without fully understanding what they've been recruited for or the significant risks involved. Isaiah is one of only five test subjects to survive the process. The remaining untreated soldiers and researchers are executed, ensuring only a handful know the origin of these new super soldiers. And after his comrades are killed in the line of duty, Isaiah becomes the only survivor and the only living proof of this truly twisted attempt to create a new Captain America. Isaiah's fate is little better than that of his brothers, sadly. After a heroic service record in World War II, he's eventually court-martialed and imprisoned, spending the better part of the next two decades as a government lab rat. While in prison, scientists attempt to clone Isaiah, the last known relic of Project Rebirth, to create a new generation of super soldiers. That's how his son Josiah is born. Isaiah is eventually pardoned by President Eisenhower and left to live out the rest of his life in obscurity. His body and mind also gradually succumb to the effects of his flawed super soldier serum. However, word of his exploits and sacrifices begins to spread among the African American community. By the time Steve Rogers belatedly learns of Isaiah's existence and pays him a visit, he sees a home filled with photos of Isaiah alongside 20th century icons like Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, John Lennon, and Nelson Mandela. His legend hasn't been forgotten by everyone. Even though being Captain America never really worked out for Isaiah, his family continues carrying on that proud tradition. Both his son Josiah and his grandson Eli are like Steve Rogers, loyal to the dream, if not necessarily the US government. In the comics, Eli is a founding member of the Young Avengers, who takes up the mantle of Patriot and wields the same triangular shield once carried by his grandfather. His teammates naturally assume Eli inherited his super strength from his grandfather, along with that shield. But Eli is hiding a dark secret of his own. Because Eli's mother was born before Isaiah was subjected to the super soldier testing, he's actually a perfectly ordinary human. He compensates for that by relying on mutant growth hormone, a super steroid that temporarily bestows incredible power, but at a terrible physical cost. After coming clean about his deception, Eli rejoins the Young Avengers, only to be grievously wounded in battle. He winds up receiving a life-saving blood transfusion from his grandfather, one which has the added bonus of finally granting Eli legitimate powers. Since then, Patriot has continued to carry on his family legacy, both alone and as a Young Avenger. 
We see the seeds of this origin story begin to sprout in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but one thing is clear already. Eli definitely shares his grandfather's rage and resentment over the toll Captain America has taken on their family, and for good reason. For 30 years, people running tests, taking my blood, coming into my cell. Even your people weren't done with me. I say it. Get out of my house! Isaiah Bradley is intended as a commentary on America's bloody, racially charged history and the way the higher ideals of the country often mask the brutal reality faced by people of color. He's also a tragic victim of one of the biggest conflicts in the Marvel Universe, one that's played out over the decades since World War II ended. The creation of Captain America is a true watershed moment in this world. It sparks a superhuman arms race with every major global power locked in a competition to develop newer and better super soldiers to fight the wars to come. The fact that the science that made Cap possible was lost with Erskine only adds to their desperation. This notion of the superhuman arms race is even more prevalent in Marvel's Ultimate Universe line, which has inspired the tone of the MCU as much as anything else over the years. In the Ultimate Universe, practically every hero and villain can be traced back to Captain America and Project Rebirth in some way. Project Rebirth is basically the original sin of the Ultimate Universe. Even mutants in the Ultimate Universe are an artificial phenomenon. Wolverine is basically patient zero in that genetic breakthrough, the first in a race of artificially created mutants. The Ultimate Universe's Nick Fury and Black Panther both share a lot in common with Isaiah Bradley, as they too are black men subjected to torture and experimentation in the name of superhuman science. While that plot point hasn't carried over to the MCU, the general idea that ordinary soldiers, particularly people of color, are mere pawns in an amoral system designed to build bigger and better weapons definitely has. You don't get a hero like Captain America without leaving a long trail of death and misery behind him. And with Steve gone, it falls on Bucky and Sam to come to terms with that terrible cost. That shield? That is, that is everything he stood for. That is his legacy. He gave you that shield and you threw it away like it was nothing. Oh, it so should. maybe he was wrong about you, and if he was wrong about you, then he was wrong about me. Even in Marvel's classic comic book universe, contemporary creators have worked to unify the many underground organizations and connect the dots between super soldiers like Captain America, Wolverine, and Deadpool. That trend really took shape during writer Grant Morrison's new X-Men series. In a storyline called Assault on Weapon Plus, Wolverine learns that the Weapon X program isn't named after the letter X, but the Roman numeral. As Weapon 10, Logan is the tenth super soldier in a larger program that dates all the way back to Captain America and Project Rebirth. In fact, Cap himself is Weapon 1, and the lineup also includes other familiar Marvel characters. Luke Cage is Weapon 6, Nuke is Weapon 7, and Typhoid Mary is Weapon 9. Project Rebirth was even revived for Weapon 5, with several soldiers bonded to pieces of an ancient symbiote decades before Venom arrived on the scene. Even after Wolverine's discovery, Weapon Plus continues to pump out new super soldiers, including Weapon 15, an advanced sentinel called Ultimaton, and Weapon 16, a viral religion called All God. Could Weapon Plus be used as the glue that ties together characters like Cap and Wolverine in the MCU? Now that the X-Men are finally under the Disney umbrella, it's certainly possible. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier has already shown a willingness to delve into this darker, more unsavory side of Captain America. And the series also introduced Madripoor, that seedy hive of scum and villainy that's one of Wolverine's favorite stomping grounds. It's going to be a while until we actually meet the MCU's Wolverine, but that doesn't mean we won't learn more about the twisted organization that created him and countless other living weapons. Isaiah Bradley was one of the MCU's first heroes to be caught up in this sinister web, but he was far from the last. For more comic book deep dives, be sure to check out our video highlighting the video game and comic book influences on Zack Snyder's Justice League. And for all your superhero needs, keep it locked to IGN.